Hey YouTube, welcome back to another video. Um, I'm taking the day off playing today, so I thought I would make, finally, this video about Bach suffixes and prefixes on their models. And boy howdy, are there a lot of different options that you could possibly see. So what I'm talking about is of course the model name of the instrument, model 50B. Notice this is not a 50B. We'll talk about that more in just a second, um, but yeah. Let's dive into it. There's a lot to talk about with Bach's. So first of all, the Bach model numbers, only concerned with trombones today. You know, Bach makes a lot of different brass instruments. They've made bass trumpets and all sorts of things. Only talking about trombones. They're the only ones I personally care about. Bass trumpet would be nice though. So let's just talk about the model number only, the 50 that we see on here, not the 50B. Again, this is not a 50B. So, different model numbers of trombones. We got the four, the six, the eight, the nine, 10, 12, 16, 36, 39, 40, 42, 45, 46, and 50. And I'm probably missing a couple in there. There might have been like a model one, two, and three at the very beginning. And there's probably some in the middle that I'm missing. These are just the ones that I have in my brain. And my brain is not full of Bach knowledge, even though there's a little bit too much. Obviously, not all of those are common. Most common to least common, I would say, are like 42, 50, 36, 16, 12, 39. And then after that, the rest of them are much less common. We don't see them. And you'll notice those are all the model numbers. And a lot of times after the model number, there's usually not a lot that's on the bell. Like this says 50B, yes. And we'll talk about what B means later. Um, but usually, you know, 42s will say 42B if they have a valve. 36s will say 36B, and the rest of those, that's all they say, unless we have a different bell material. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, and basically the gist of it is these options that we're going to talk about following this part of the video are not always stamped. In fact, very rarely are they stamped. There's a period, maybe like late 80s through the 90s, where sometimes every single option would be stamped on the bell. I've seen horns with like five or six little things stamped after the model name, but usually they are not. And this is where people get confused. They'll be like, I'm selling a 50B. It says 50B right here. What else would it be? Well, no, this is a 50B2, as you can see, but it's not stamped that way because honestly, they just didn't do that. It's just one of those things. It's a company, they do silly things. There's no international standard that makes them say exactly what they are on the instrument. This is just Bach making up their own stuff. So let's move on to bell materials. So the first and most common um, suffix that we're gonna see on all of these instruments, not just the ones with valves, is the bell materials. So if there's nothing after the bell or the uh, model number, it's a 42, then it's a yellow bell. Yellow brass, um, the most common bell option. But we've also got Bach gold brass, which is uh, 80-20 gold brass. And that is a G. That's by far the most common option thing you will see on an instrument. Um, there's a lot of different horns that come with G bells. And probably most of the ones in the list I said above came with G bells. There's also rare red brass bells from the New York days, but I don't think they're marked as such. I don't think there's like a different letter they put after them. And we'll talk about what R means in a moment. Uh, but yeah, G. So this would be a 50 BG if it had a gold brass bell. It does not. Um, 39G would be a gold brass, obviously. Um, the G star bell is a specific bell only found in 42s that's gold brass and also is made thinner, slightly thinner than a normal gold brass bell. That's the Friedman model of 42, and it's only on that one. So G star, you're only gonna find a 42s. It's very cool. And then the last option, of course, that I'm aware of that has a marking is R. That's a Sterling Silver Bell, the Sterling Plus models. And usually those will say Sterling Plus underneath everything, um, as well as saying R. And sometimes they don't say R and they just say Sterling Plus. But anyway, R as a suffix, like a 42R or a 36R or a 12R, 16R, those are sterling silver bells, um, which are really cool. They don't make those anymore. Um, they're kind of uncommon. And those are electroformed and not spun. Uh, so instead of putting a big old sheet of silver onto a mandrel and then spinning it to the shape, they just have a mandrel and they go 
boop, and the silver just kind of goes whoop and makes that shape. It's pretty cool. That's how they make, that's another different way of making silver bells. Like King Silver Sonics are beaten into shape just like a normal bell, for instance. And as far as I know, like I said, R are only found on 12, 16, 36, and 42 because there were only two mandrels. There's the small tenor bell, which is basically everything under um, 16. And then the 36 and 42 are basically the same, just minus a half inch. There's no 50 R's, sadly, or I probably would own one. All right, so on to the next one, bell size. So this one's not as obvious if you don't know bass trombones, but if it's got an L as a suffix, it's got a larger bell. On basses, 50 BL, for instance, they have a 10 and a half inch bell. And that's the only one that goes up one inch. And actually, there are other L bells out there. So there's a 36 L that's got an eight and a half inch bell instead of an eight inch bell. There's extremely rare New York 36s that have the eight and a half inch bell. As far as I know, I've been told that. So they are 42 bell. That's, that's what a 42 bell is. Um, there's 42 bells that are L bells. Well, again, I've been told this, and those are a half inch larger at nine inches. And there are 45 L's, which instead of nine inches are nine and a half inches. I have a friend who has a New York 45 that is not, again, not marked 45 L. And it might say that on like the shop card or something, but it has a nine and a half inch bell instead of a nine. And so we would call that a 45 BL, I guess. I'm pretty sure it's got a different bell color as well. Anyway, it gets very complicated. Um, there are also 10 inch Bach 50 bells. I don't know what you call that, a half L, something like that, because the normal L, again, 10 and a half inches, and that's by far the most common. You're not gonna see that on 42s, 36s, etc. It just is extremely uncommon. And sadly, there are no eight inch small bore box, 16, 12, etc. only seven and a half inch. I would love an eight inch myself. Um, on to the next one. Our next suffix was very common, well, common-ish, again, not extremely common, but more common in the 80s and 90s, and that's H, and that's for bell weight. Again, we had a G star bell earlier. Um, that's a lightweight gold brass bell. H is found on both gold brass and yellow brass bells, and it means heavy. These are the Chungus bells, and my God, are they heavy. I've played a 50 BGH, yes, BGH, with Thayer's. So that, and it was an L bell. So it was a large bell, and it was heavy gold brass, and it was the heaviest bell I've ever played on, and it was extremely bad. I do not recommend the H bells myself. I've also played a straight 42H recently. Super weird. I just, I, I don't get why you would want that, but again, it was a fad 80s, 90s, mostly gone now. I personally would avoid H bells unless you play one and you really like it and you can use it. I think the normal Bach weights, totally fine, especially modern day. They're like a really good kind of like medium light weight. They're the way to go. H bells, ugh. this is like the first thing that I would kind of ugh, steer away from in the options that we've seen. On to the valve types, and wow, there's a lot of these. All right, we got valve types. So the most obvious one is nothing. There's no suffix at all. So a Bach 42 with nothing else on it. It's a straight yellow brass 42. There's no valve, it's just got a straight gooseneck. As far as I know, there are no factory straight Bach 50s, but you will find Bach 50s that do not say 50B. They just say model 50. And that's not necessarily going to be a straight horn. Almost all of those are gonna be like a 50B or they're on like a Thayer valve set or something like that. Again, the bell stamp doesn't mean a whole lot. Um, just tells you what model it is. Um, and the next obvious one, ob the obviously obvious, obvious one is B for closed wrap rotor. And that's the original valves, the 42B, the 50B, the 46B, you know, etc. That's closed wrap with the original small rotors that Bach designed in like the 30s. A lot of those horns around, of course. Um, the BO has the open wrap rotor that was designed in the 80s. Um, Sometimes they're better, <laughs> a lot of times not necessarily better. They certainly stick out really far. 
Um, we got the BOF, that's an extremely modern one. Um, it's only one letter off, but that's only come out in the last like five years. And those have the Vinyl Schmidt open flow valves with an open wrap. Um, those are really good, those are a great valve. Those are only found on 42s as far as I know. I don't think there's a 36 BOF. Um, the K, uh, 50K, 42K, 36K, that stands for the K valve or the balanced valve. I think Bach called it the balanced valve, but the guy who designed it, his name started with a K. And so K was the letter they used because B, it's already taken, couldn't use B. Um, and again, those are out there. Plenty of 36Ks, 42Ks, 50Ks. We have T for OE Thayer valves. Those are the ones that came out in the early 90s up until like 2014, 2015. You will find um, 42 T's and 50 T's. I don't think there were ever 36 T's because uh, you wouldn't be able to play it. The valve would stick out too far with the a little bit narrower slide. And we also have AF. Um, it's not the colloquial meaning of AF. It means axial flow for the instrument innovations or Olsen axial flow valve. Um, these look largely the same as the T horn, 42T and a 42AF. You know, they're like visually similar, but they are very different instruments. They have a totally different axial design and the like fittings and stuff are also different. The linkages are different. Um, and you'll find those on 42s and 50s only. And then we have A for Hagman because you couldn't use H. Uh, Khan uses H as their suffix for like everything. So you can't use H, they had to use A instead. Um, and those are found on, I think again, only 42s and 50s. Now we have to get to the suffix suffixes. So that was all just single valves, right? Um, once we get into double valves, we have even more things you have to put after what type of valve it is. So if you just have to 50, 50B, 42B, it's just one valve. It's all you got. And again, the bell stamp, it means nothing. This has two valves and it yet, it says 50B, it has two valves. So if it has a two, a number two, after one of those options, it's got two dependent valves. That could be a 50B2, a 50B2O, a 50, uh, well, those are the only ones. Yep, that's it. <laughs> There's only two dependent options. Then if you have a three, again, a number three after that first suffix, then you've got independent valves. So a 50K3, 50T3, 50AF3, 50A3, those are independent bass drum modes. These are things that are probably obvious if you've seen box, but hey, I'm going over all the details today that I know about. So that's all the valve types and all of the different options here, um, dependent or deep independent um, for bases. On to the next one. A super rare option, the, all the options we've seen so far, you know, they, they happen. Uh, but this one I've only seen like twice, three times ever, and that is detachable bell. And this does not refer to like the Thayer horns or axial flow valves. Yes, you can take the bells off of those because you have to in order to take the valves apart. Um, but there was a special detachable bell option on 42s and 36s where you could take the bell off of the valve section. And basically all that means is that you had most of a convertible valve section. So the detachable bell section um, is denoted with a D. And that just means you got a horn that probably came with the valve section that the, the bell could come off of. And assuming maybe somewhere down the road you bought a straight gooseneck that would also fit because why else would you have the bell come off? Again, this is an option that was available, 80s, 90s mostly. And I'm not sure why it came just as is because the real option that counts um, is convertible. And these are marked with a C. Um, a C for closed wrap and a CO for open wrap. And they just came with the stock rotors. There's no other convertible horns um, unless they're done aftermarket, of course. Um, but there's plenty of like 36 Cs out there, 46 or uh, 42 COs, etc. And they basically have the normal bell tabs. You take them off and then you put on a straight gooseneck and you can undo all the things and put it back on. They're slightly janky because the straight gooseneck has to be different than the normal one because the bell brace goes in a different place when you have a valve. Um, 
but it's a nice way to get kind of two horns out of one. And again, the detachable bell, which is mostly the same, but it doesn't come with the other part, is kind of a weird option. I'm just not sure why someone would order it with a detachable bell and not the other thing, and not the entire thing. So again, we got detachable bell, which is D, convertible bell, which is C, or C -R uh, C O. sorry, for open wrap. On to the next one, because those are a little more rare. So one that we see only on a couple horns, uh, maybe 36s as well, is neck pipe options. The neck pipe is this guy, um, and it can be on a horn with a valve or without a valve. And the uh, open neck pipe is M. I don't know why that is M. There's no M's in open or neck pipe or gooseneck or anything. But M is the, the thing that denotes that. That's on the 16M. And also you can get that on 42s, the 42 such and such M, and it'll have a slightly different neck pipe that was designed, I think, um, specifically for the 42. The 36 has a little bit small of a neck pipe for a 547 horn, and of course, it's just the same on 42, so it's like a little bit undersized. And so there's an optional M neck pipe that you can get for 42s. And every so often, one of those 42s actually has that built in from the factory. Um, I, you know, I haven't really seen those, um, but like my um, custom 42 that I had made has a factory Bach M neck pipe on it. Again, not a super common option other than the 16M, which is pretty common by itself. So that almost wraps it up for suffixes, but I want to talk about a couple prefixes first. And that's pretty simple. There's only two. One of them is LT, and that's for lightweight slide. That means you have a nickel slide, nickel crook, no oversleeves. And Bach made this for pretty much every model. I'm not sure about the 39, the Alto. I'm not sure if those came ever with like a stock nickel slide with no oversleeves. If, if they did, you know, let me know. But the small horns did, um, the large tenors did, and basses do as well. And that's just marked with LT before the model name. So if this were marked on the bell, and I don't think it ever would be, it would say LT50B. And that would mean it's got a lightweight slide connected to a single valve Bach 50. LT in front of whatever the, the model number is. Every so often, you can get a Friedman model 42, and those are actually marked with LT50 before 42, blah, 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 blah. And that's to say that they come with a lightweight 50 slide, but they come with a 42 bell section because they are interchangeable, of course. And that's because that's what Friedman played for a long time. He played a lightweight um, 50 slide the base slide, and it's not changed in any way, on a tenor setup. And so you could buy the same thing from Bach, and it's an LT5042 G-Star T blah, 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 blah. And that's, again, extremely rare, only found on the Friedman model. But if you ever start playing your 42 with a 50 slide and lightweight, you can call it an LT5042. Super, super useful information. That's why you watch this channel. The last suffix I want to talk about that... I really do not have a lot of knowledge about is the Roman numerals found on early Bach small bores, mostly the Model 6. Um, those of you versed in these models, because um, they are out there and they're really good horns, I just don't play them and I, I do not know all the, the information on these, but uh, Model 6s will have a lot of time a little Roman numeral after the model number. So it'll be a 6 and then Roman numeral 7 in lowercase. And that's the seventh variation of the Model 6. And they have like a different bell flare and like the tuning slide can be different. I think the neck, neck pipe can be also different. Again, um, as far as I know, there's at least seven different variations of that. And I think the seven is the most common. Maybe it's like the biggest. Maybe the Glenn Miller Model 6 is a 6-7. I can't remember. In any case, that's a thing to be found on early model box small bores that I do not know about, but that is one of the suffixes and I thought I'd include it here. So most importantly, because this is extremely important information, what's the longest possible model name you could make with all the Bach letters and numbers? I thought about this a lot. And of course, this is a horn that I don't think you could possibly get. Um, if you wanted to, 
you know, hit up Bach and see if you can order this right now because this would be with a modern valve set. But here we go. It would be an LT5042 BOF GHLM. And that would be an instrument with a lightweight 50 slide. It's a 42, obviously. It's got the uh, the open flow Meinl Schmidt valve. It's got a gold heavy large bell. It's nine inches with an open neck pipe. Now, would all those options be on one instrument? I don't think so. I don't think you can uh, off, uh, order, I should say, heavy bells now. I don't think you can order L bells. And I'm the... BOF valve section might, might already come with the M neck pipe, so you wouldn't have it on the end. But that sure is fun to say. LT5042 BOF GHLM. And of course, there's other ones you can make too. You kind of have to use the LT50 and then the 42 because that makes it way longer than all the other ones. But that's the longest possible one I can think of. If you can think of a longer one, put it in the comments below. That is all the Bach prefixes and suffixes that I can think about. And if I forgot an obvious one, please let me know because I put this together and I was like racking my brain thinking about them and I've probably forgot like six. That's all I got for today. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.